Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Stefan DeVille, leading tonight's discussion, Let's Talk Sports. But before we do that, first of all, I'd like to in introduce the cast of characters that are with us this evening. Big Brother Wayne. You, what's good? Big Brother Charles. Yeah, I'm yes, Charles. sir. Yeah, his name is Charles. It threw me off to normally, uh, you know, I identify him as Chuck, but he wrote his name out today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes also, I forget who I am. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> also, I'd like to give a shout out to two of our cast members that are not here. Charles Castile, he's taking care of business and whooping some ass uh, at uh, on a golf course. And um, big brother Mike Castile, whose son graduated today, his oldest son graduated today from high school. So uh, shout out to the fellas that are not here. We'll keep it light and, and uh, airy for you. But before we begin, uh, we'd like to uh, uh, have Wayne give us an introduction uh, or a discussion on our uh, Manscaped product. All right. Hey, thanks, Steph. Uh, hey, guys. I know last week we talked about the Manscaped product, and Chuck did a really good job talking about getting your dads ready for Father's Day. The great yeah. thing, the great thing about Manscaped and their products is that you know Father's Day is a great opportunity to get it, but you know what? You can use it anytime, right? So, so it's really popular for below the waist care, man care. So they have some really good products. We've we've been getting all their latest stuff. Uh, the latest, the latest lawnmower 4.0 is is a, a a huge upgrade, a huge improvement from their 3.0, which was really good. So it's it's really it's nice to have a, a to get first dibs at some of this stuff and see how all these things work. Um, but but you know the lawnmower is like their big big product. But they also have nose hair nose hair trimmers. Right. Yes, everybody knows somebody with some errant nose hairs. So mm -hmm. yeah, so so that's another thing electronic item they got. They also got this thing that we got recently, and I don't know how many of you got got a chance to use it, but they got this little razor. They got this little razor that's a manual. Yo, that, yeah, that's the business right there. It it's the perfect like would you hold it? It fits perfect. Right. It's yep. crazy. You would think a big would work. No, this is the real deal. This is the yep. business. So yeah, so they have those kind of products, all these cutting things. But on top of that, they have colognes. Yes, from Smell Goods. They also got some ball cologne. But when, ball you know, cologne. Well, they, I don't think they call it cologne, but it's, it's to make your balls not so stinky. Ball Unless smell stinky. good. Call it what you want. Hey, it's, important in the, it's important in the summertime. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, it's hot, hot out here in the street. <laughs> but, but listen, so uh, we want you to know that uh, um, J Bam has been rocking with Manscaped for a while, and we have a, a our own code, which is J Bam Skate, J Bam Skate at Manscaped.com, and you'll get twenty percent off, twenty percent off anything and everything that's there. Plus, you'll get free shipping. It's a big deal, right? So, so be so take take advantage of it. Um, for ladies out there who might be listening, maybe you can you know, maybe you could purchase for your dude. Maybe you could point your dude to it so he can purchase for himself. You know, whatever it is, you know, you ain't necessarily got to buy stuff for your father right now because Father's Day is over, but it might look a little weird. But anyway, make sure, <laughs> make a little sure. Little weird late. <laughs> yeah, and, and madly, right? But make sure uh, if you're going to Manscaped, check out their products. You will not be disappointed. You definitely will not be disappointed. You will get 20% off each and every item that they have. And, um, um, you will also get free shipping. So again, it's J Bamscaped, J Bamscaped at manscaped.com. And once you use that as the promo code on their website, you will get 20% off plus free shipping. So again, guys, uh, take advantage of this. It's a great opportunity, great products. You'll be, you'll be very satisfied. Thank you. I appreciate it, Wayne. Uh, great rundown. Um, just before we begin talking about sports, because um, that's the, the uh, main topic that we'd like to discuss today. We'd like to say, extend our condolences to the three so far people that have passed away, plus many injuries <clears throat> down in Sunrise, Florida. If you're not familiar yeah. with Sunrise, Florida, it's uh, just north of, it's part of um, uh, North Miami Beach. And it sits right along the coast, beautiful area of Miami Beach. It's not as crowded as South Beach. And uh, it's, there are a lot of residential um, homes and or condominiums or, or even um, 
apartment complexes. Well, unfortunately, somehow, some way, uh, apartment complex just collapsed. And so far, they have three people confirmed dead. Um, they've got close to 100 people that are missing. So they probably expect the death toll to rise. And, um, you know, we just send our condolences to them as well as their families. Um, we don't know anybody down there, but it doesn't matter. Um, we're still part of the human race. And we, we hate to hear of a tragedy that um, unfolds, especially so unexpected. Yeah. Crazy. No doubt. Crazy. No yeah. doubt. Yeah. But anyway, all right. To, to jump on our topic today, we're going to talk sports. All right. Just to let you all know. Um, we're all getting together starting tomorrow, and it'll be the first time that all five of us will be in the same room because uh, Mike flies down from Connecticut to join us, and we're going to get around and uh, uh, have some fellowship I ain't coming. tomorrow. I ain't coming. I ain't coming. Yeah. I, ain't coming. I, don't, I don't trust Mike. I ain't coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> trust me. If, if you think we're funny on the podcast, wait until we get together in oh, the room. Oh, it's going to be crazy. Uh, yeah, because matter of fact, I, I, I think it deserves a video. I, I think we'll put together a video or something. Yeah. See what we can do. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. A, a Jones session here or there. All right. But anyway, so one thing that we do when we talk, when we're around each other, we eventually start talking sports, be it the NBA uh, and, and my hate for the Knicks. As well as the NFL, my hate for the Cowboys, um, and and the Giants, and sometimes the Eagles too, you know. And then you know we don't talk a lot of Major League Baseball. I like Major League Baseball, especially the Nats. Um, but first, we want to talk about the Olympics. It has become huge. The 2021 Olympics. We have rising stars that have just come out of the uh, collegiate ranks and are are doing great things. You know, and some are actually professionals. So, for example, um, talking about collegiate ranks, we've got North Carolina A&T, a historically black college and university down in Greensboro, North Carolina, that the 4x4, 400 team consists of that team for the United States uh, Olympics. You know, that is freaking amazing. All four of those guys that are on one team are now representing not only... Uh, the United States, but the culture. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I, I mean, Steph, you, you, you're telling me about this. I'm just hearing about this not too long ago. I, I think it's great. It, it obviously, it's never been done before. Um, and to have it at HBCU, I, I think maybe maybe it's not such a big deal that it's HBCU. I think it's great that it is. But I, but it, to be real, if you go back in the other Olympics, those people that made up that team were from HBCU. <laughs> A number of HBCUs make that team, mm -hmm. but so it wasn't a. Uh, but, but but for one school, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I, I think it's great, and I mm -hmm. think it's going to do big things for their program down there in North Carolina. Well, that's what I was going to say. I mean, that's a testament to not only the, the, the kids, but that's a testament to the program. That's a testament to the coaching. You know, that's a testament to, uh, you know, the, the, the whole uh, organization that's or the whole mechanism that's behind getting these, uh, these, these guys to the finish line, which is, uh, you know, the Olympics. So it's going to be interesting to watch. It's going to be interesting to see if they pull it out. And, uh, you know, I believe they will. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I mean, uh, you know, uh, they've been working together all this time. Um, I think they've gelled, and uh, I think they're going to pull it out. So, yeah. go Team USA. Yeah, hey, that's 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 representing the MEAC, right, Steph? Yeah, so, absolutely. I mean, I'm not saying Morgan was going to be in it, but still, that's MEAC. <laughs> Dude, you remember when we were at school, we had a uh, young lady that was on the 1990 Olympics. And uh, she, yeah, she uh, she was, uh, I think they did the 4 by 400 or maybe the 4 by 100 Um and uh, she, and they won a gold medal, so I mean, Morgan State has produced uh, Olympiads. About right, you know? yeah. right, yeah, and also <clears throat> we're talking about um, you know track. You know, we got Shakira Richardson. Oh my God! Ooh, talk about fast. Man, oh, yeah, the so Flash. The damn Flash. She, yeah. she she wears a lightning bolt around her neck. Right. And let me tell you, man, if you hear her talk, uh, I heard, you know, you, you have some people say this, some of the stuff she says may be, you know, arrogant. No, sir. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between arrogance and confidence. You mm -hmm. know, she has been working on her craft for years. 
And, you know, I, I heard a part of it or a snippet of an interview. So, I, you know what, I'm not even going to re uh, repeat it because I don't want to repeat it out of context. But uh, just what she was saying was, um, you know, she feels confident. She feels like she's the best. And it, it but the way she said it, I, I, I can understand somebody might might take it as, as arrogant. I don't think she meant it that way at all, at all. I think she said she's been preparing her whole life for this moment. Correct. And uh, and she's she's ready for it. And uh, so, you know, hey, man, hat off to her. Uh, because I also saw a video of her earlier today also where um, some earlier races that she lost. If you look at her right now, you, you say to me, no, this is a phenom. She's, she's never lost a race. She's, you know, no, she, you know, dues. she, yeah, she, she paid her dues. She lost a couple of races. I don't know how many, uh, but the particular race I saw, I mean, she was, she got dusted by a couple of links. This is somebody that went back to the shed, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Worked on her craft along with her team. I, I'm not going to give it all to her. I'm going to say that she had, because she did. She had a, a, a team behind her. I remember hearing about her years ago. And here, here she is, poised, going to, I was going to say poised to go to the Olympics. She is going to the Olympics. So, hey, again, you know, black girl magic. Mm -hmm. Oh, no question about it. No yes, question sir. about it. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah I, I, you know, when she did a semifinal race and she pointed at the scoreboard as she's still running, I said, mm -hmm. oh, my. Yeah. Oh, oh my. Right. Oh, and my. even that people said, or, you know, some people said that that was arrogant. It wasn't arrogant. How can you be? That's not arrogant. That's confidence. And she wasn't, you know, she was she was surprised. She was pointing at the time. Right. That's what she was pointing at. She right. saw the time. She was like, oh, shit. So, right. yeah, I mean, come on. And then, and then I watched her run. She doesn't get out of the box fast, but she mm -hmm. makes up mm -hmm. for it. So, you know, I think the only thing that can beat her is her, her own self. You uh, there you go. Yeah. There I you go. I think that's the biggest thing with all with the Olympics, right? Especially when you're talking track and field, no one wants to catch a little injury. You know, mm. a, a little injury matters because we're talking about yeah. split seconds, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. One yeah. hundredth of a second changes, yeah. you know, a little tweak mm -hmm. of the ankle. That's a problem. Yeah. yeah. Here's the other thing they're talking about with her. Uh, after she won that race, what did she do? First thing she did was she looked for her yeah. grandmother. She ran up in the stands mm -hmm. and she hugged her grandmother. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was more uh, significant of our culture. Mm -hmm. um, you know, b uh, that there's nothing more reassuring than that that hug from Big Mama. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there's, there's, you know, and it's also uh, uh, nothing like getting that. It's one thing to get kudos and applause from your peers and the people that are that are watching you perform so to speak but there's nothing like that that va the validation of a hug from you know the people that have really been in the trenches and struggling with you grandma knows what she's been through mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so for her to make it to the olympics and for her grandmother to be there for her to run up in the stage and give her grandmother that 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 uh that allowed her grandmother to also celebrate with her so i thought that was pretty cool yeah, and the fact that, you know, she learned that her biological mother had just passed last week. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. Yes. So, I did not so, know that. Yeah, so that shows that the grandmother raised her. Mm. Uh, because you just say it in that fashion. So, um, you know, that, that's just a testimony to not only her grandmother, but, you know, the family that supported her, lifted mm -hmm. her, and pushed her. And yeah. uh, so kudos. Unfortunately, because of COVID restrictions, U.S. families can't go over to see their kids participate. Um, in, in Tokyo? In Japan, yeah, yeah. They're only allowing 10,000 residents um, to see this, so. Hey, uh, no, no disrespect, good. Yeah. I mean, and I, it's no slam against them. I'm just saying, let's make sure that this thing is isolated. Let's yes. make sure that, it, yeah. it, that yeah. it, it's gone, all right? Yeah, you get yeah. everybody from around the world in one spot. Yeah, yeah. 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 make it a bubble. No, no yeah. question about it. Uh, yeah, I mean, not, yeah. So that's it. No, no, good point. Good point. All right. Now, um, the other person I want to talk about is a gymnast. Now, true story. I named my first daughter after Dominique Dawes, who's a oh. D.C. resident. Dominique Dawes represented the U.S. in 1992. I don't know if she won a medal. I'll have to go back and look at it. But um, she was a heck of a, a um, gymnast, and she did well in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I named my first daughter after um, Dominic Dawes. Now, segue to 2021, we got a beast out there named Simone Biles, mm -hmm. who, who is so talented that she has 
moves and flips named after her, the Biles. You know, and and if she and if she is so good, it upsets people because you know one person said, um, "Why are you doing it?" And basically, someone said, "Because I can." Yeah, you know, right. that, that black girl magic. You know, and it, and it, it's just unbelievable to watch her um, on the especially the floor uh, routine. She she's just another level. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think I saw. Maybe it's the same interview you're talking about, Steph. I think I saw it a week or so ago. And uh, yeah, she's, you know, she says she's over the hill in age wise, but she right. can still do it all. And cool. there's a, there's a, I, I don't know the name of all, you know, I'm not, I don't know the details of gymnastics, but they have, there's a, a move that she's been working on that's only been accomplished by a man. And basically it said that a woman can't do it. And she's, mm. that's, I'm guessing she's gonna pull that out for the Olympics on the ass. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. 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 And, and I look forward to it. Yeah. Go ahead, Chuck. Yeah, I was gonna say, well, you, you know, they're already, you know, when when you're when you're so good or at what you do and, and you you grossly surpass your peers, they have to come up with ways to to either knock you down a peg or to I guess what's you know, I guess the bottom line is minimize your accomplishments. Y- yeah, you know, um, she's she's so good that they penalize her for being so good. Right. You know, the the move, the last move that she did, I, I believe they try to penalize her for that. Um, but that's unfortunately that's you know just to throw a little history out there. That's kind of what they do to us. Now, Simone Biles is not the first that this has happened to. There was a uh, French black uh, skater, ice skater. Ice skater. Yep, I remember that, that. This happened to. She did a move that was it wasn't banned, but it was deemed too dangerous to do. Mm-hmm. Well, it was deemed too dangerous to do because she was the only one that could do it. And what that was was a backflip on ice. So she did it. She did it in competition. She landed it successfully. And I have to look it up. I was trying to do it, but I, my computer is a little slow. Uh, but I believe that she was um, penalized for that. I don't know what the what what it was. I don't know if, if she was fined points or what if she was just disqualified altogether. But the bottom line was she she outperformed everybody. That move put her in the category way above everyone else, but because no one else could do it, she was the only one else could do it. The, um, instead of you know congratulating her and telling everybody else you need to step your game up, they penalized her to bring her down to everyone else's level. And yes, she was black, and as well as Simone Biles is black, and you won't hear me say that that is why it happened. However, a lot a lot of other people uh, a lot smarter than me have said that. So I will say that. But, you know, one other thing I'd say about Simone is that, um, you know, she, I think she was like 26. Mm-hmm. About and, that. And it's something like that. And I mean, just think about it. Imagine any athlete being over the hill. At, what are you going to do? I mean, what do what, this is what you've been doing since you're like two. What do you mm-hmm. do now, right? You become a teacher and instructor. I mean, yeah. I Pretty mean, what much. That's, yeah. That's, so why not and, go for it? Why not go for yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you what, well, but what do all uh, hero, iconic sports figures do? They they become uh, commentators, yep. right? Mm-hmm. And that's probably what she'll do, is something like that. Um, but I mean, let's face it; she's set. She's in the history books. Money's not an issue. Um, so I mean, you know, quite frankly, she can do whatever the hell she wants to do. But you know, I, you know, I would like to see what opportunities they do throw her away, um, um, because she she deserves every opportunity that that she gets. And in terms of the the teaching part, I, I hope that she does go into some role where she's a mentor in some respect to the gym, the young, especially the young black gymnasts that are coming up uh, behind her. Because uh, much like Tiger Woods, you know, Tiger Woods, you know, a lot of you start. Black kids were golfing before Tiger Woods, but of course, you know, it, it became more prominent in our community yeah. when you saw mm-hmm. Tiger Woods out there. Same with Simone Biles, same with Dominique Dawes, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I hope that she does continue to uh, get out there and continue to uh, inspire our young girls to, to be gymnasts and, and, and move up because, trust me, um, 
black girl magic is real. She's not the last. There's there's going to be one right behind her in the next five to ten years. It's going to uh, come out in it because they're going to study her. They're going to yes. study what Simone Biles has done. Yes. They're going to try to – because she's the gold standard now. Yes. And they're going to try to protect, perfect her moves. And then what do you do if you're the consummate professional? You try to come up with a move of your own. Mm -hmm. So – and, and I, quite frankly, I think it's going to be one of us that, that does it again, mm -hmm. my opinion. Mm -hmm. oh, and by the way, she's only 24. 24, okay. Yeah, yeah she's, she's born in 97. Definitely, definitely over there. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> but, 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 but truth be known, my youngest is a, my youngest daughter who's 23 is a gymnast and she's trying to figure out what to do post gym, you know, you know, granted she doesn't do it anymore, but you, you're more prone to injury as you get older sure. in um, gymnastics. So, you know, she's trying to figure out her next steps. So, and by the way, she actually met Simone Biles' um, parents and she said, they're just down to earth. She met them in Stuttgart. Really down for, anyone, for anyone out there with some sexist attitude, they may be thinking that uh, gym, uh, being a gymnast is not a sport. And I say that because, you know, like we're talking about retiring at 24 and things like that. Man, these women train all of their lives. Oh. They put their body through torture, through hell, like every, any other sport to, to get to this level. And because I've heard people say, oh, it's, you know, is it? Are you crazy? Do you know how athletic you have to be to be a gymnast? Yeah, yeah. Ma male too. You male, know those, female, those, those rings. Oh man. my god! And and the um pummel horse or whatever that, right. that thing is. Yeah, right. You know, because we we tend to think you know uh if you if you on a football field and you you knocking dudes over that's that's a sport that's a manly sport. I bet money you can't get on them damn rings and do that the cross right. thing right. and just hold it. Right, man. Oh man, that's hey. crazy. They got poker tournaments on ESPN. Just, just be quick. Yeah, that's, hey, I, that's, a, that's a sport. I don't care what yeah. anybody says. All right. Do you understand the wrist action that's involved? <laughs> hey, come on, man. Oh yeah. man. Hey, I guess the last thing we'll talk about with um, the Olympics, and matter of fact, there is a black female. I don't have her name right now, but uh, it is competing in swimming as well, and they said she's a beast. Um, and and I, the name skips me right now. I may be able to go, uh, go back to it later. But uh, last thing we want, definitely want to talk about uh, is basketball in, in the Olympics. Wayne, go ahead. Uh, yeah, well, okay. What I'll say is that, you know, everyone always talks about the dream team, right? Everyone knows kind of the history of it. Uh, back in the day, you know, basketball is America's sport. And it was always, and the Olympics was always a collegiate type of thing, right? So there would be players from the top, you know, people who were like just drafted or had not played an NBA game yet. But there was like two years in a row, I can't tell you, uh, two Olympics in a row, we got our asses whooped. I mean, we just got drug all up and down the court. And, you know, America wasn't going for that. So then here comes a dream team. So I just just a little bit of history for those who may or may not know that. So that's the that's the Jordan, Ewing, Barkley, you know, mm -hmm. all, all those dudes, right? Uh, the original joint. Um, so it's been kind of like a big thing over the last every year to make the dream team or well, you know the next Olymp U.S. Olympic right. team. Yeah. Um, the thing, the reason I bring it up is because this year is a little bit different uh, because it's not such a big deal who's making the team. Remember, they only feel twelve players mm -hmm. but it's it's who it's who's opting out like they're not even interested in you know this is big i want to say it's a tryout but it's kind of like an invitational like mm. I know, 30 40 people show up and then there's just like the top 12 but like people like lebron is in is already opted out step seth curry already opted out you know ad opted out donovan mitchell chris paul but he's already they've already paul. gone haven't they yeah yeah yeah, yeah. they've yeah. done it They've done it, but yeah. that's not why. Because but keep in mind, keep in mind, Jordan did as much as he could. You know, and LeBron, yeah. LeBron was in the last one and he had been in a couple of them. Right. You see what I mean? So it's mm. it, it's it's you're right. They have done it. I don't think that they're stepping aside to give someone else a chance. Yeah, I, think, I don't either. Yeah. Yeah. They're just stepping aside because they got other stuff going on. Kevin Durant will be there. I, I'm I'm gonna say, say yeah, they they've got other stuff going on, but I think that the it's, it's it's been soured 
You know, the, the Olympics just isn't the same anymore. And, and then with, excuse me, trying to adjust here, but and then with all the political crap going on in the world and all that, um, and then COVID, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't do it either. I mean, especially if, if I was somebody like LeBron and I was uh, you know, further in my career, if I was younger in my career, then yeah. If I hadn't already done it, then yeah. Um, I, LeBron doesn't have anything to prove. Steph Curry doesn't have anything to prove. Um, you know, they've got their endorsement deals. They've got the medals. You know, yeah. sit this one out. You know, COVID, all that. You guys going over there. Relations, relations aren't the best in the world right now, so I'm just going to sit it out. That's the way I kind of look at it. Um, well, let's be clear, though. The U.S. is still fielding a solid team. I mean, oh, we it's still okay. got a good team. It's just okay. that yeah. these notable players aren't going. Right. Yeah. So, but I, I think part of the problem was that the NBA had a shortened off season, you know, mm-hmm. from from the, the bubble, bubble season, mm-hmm. and and then they went right back at it in November, uh, early December. Matter of fact, the first game was Christmas Day. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, with that shortened season, it, the three guys that you name, all three were hurt. You know, LeBron, mm-hmm. AD, as well as uh, Steph Curry. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think that I think that plays a lot into it. You know, it's like, hey, let me take the summer to you know, get my body right. You know, KD is the only one that was actually not in the bubble last year because of his Achilles and or whatever injury he no, had. You're right. And he, so, he missed half this season too. Correct. The so, you know, yeah. so he's he's in ba- basketball rhythm. And he's and now that they, yeah, now that they got knocked out of the playoffs, I mean, he, he, if, if they were continuing on to the finals, I don't think KD would be playing. Um, because you know that's another fourteen games, potentially fourteen games that he still has to play, mm-hmm. and and I mean hell, he he played forty eight minutes, um uh, the the the, uh, the game that they won, uh, and what he had fifty points, fifty three points, something crazy like that. It, insane. It, he, oh, yeah. He, yeah, he had a triple double. It was right. insane. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, I mean, you know, if we're segueing into into the N- NBA. Right. Uh, you know, obviously everyone knows this, we're in the final four, right? There's four right. teams left. Who saw Atlanta? Who saw Atlanta? Actually, I did. I actually you saw I them did. being there. I, yeah, I actually said Atlanta be, it could because because of Nate McMillan and the fact that he, he brought them from the ashes since he's only been there <laughs> since March uh I want to say twenty fifth. They still list him uh, as interim. Right. Right. And I mean, we all know that Nate McMillan is a heck of a coach. Um, Obviously. Uh, but, but Atlanta plays with a chip on their shoulder. It's like, I, I don't, you know, and I'm talking about Joseph uh, um, and B, uh, you know, or I'm not, I'm, I don't care if you're Goliath, you know, <laughs> we, we're still going to slay you. And Trey Young has just been shooting off the, off the chain. Yeah. Uh, it's unbelievable. Yeah, they, they, they put it on Milwaukee last night in game oh, yeah. one. And, oh, yeah. uh, you know, it's a close game, but like you said, they're not supposed to win. Correct. And, and Correct. just nobody told them. Correct. <laughs> so, Correct. It's crazy. I mean, look, I, I, you know, being a Knicks fan, it kind of feels good that they got knocked out, that, that they're the ones that knocked out the Knicks. Like, like, they knocked out Philly, number one seed, too. Yep. Yeah, the so, best record in the NBA, isn't it? Yeah. or was it Phoenix Suns has the best record in the NBA? That might, it might uh, be right Phoenix, but but yeah. So I mean, the, the funny the thing I want to bring up with these final four: you got Atlanta, you got Milwaukee, you know that's one set, and then you got Phoenix and you got LA. None of the uh, uh, Clippers. LA Clippers. Yes, let's be clear. I'm sorry, the LA Clippers. Clippers. Um, none of these teams have. None of these teams have. Uh, I think Atlanta won like in the fifties or something. And as, Milwaukee as a, won uh, <laughs> with a center named Lou Alcindor. Yeah, the, before, but, before wow. he became Kareem. Yeah, correct. Um, mm. But but Phoenix has never been this far. That's correct. And, and neither even with Barkley and yep. and the Clippers either. So I mean, yep. it, it's going to be it's it's just, it's been a really good season. I think it started with I mean a really good playoff. I think it started with the play. I like that ten game deal. Mm. I know LeBron gave it a lot of hate, but. Yo, why not give it? Why not make it a win or go home kind of thing to get in? Why not play in? I thought that was really mm-hmm. cool. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, but I think that uh, NBA is picking it up a little bit. Um, I think that you know, like you said, the short end off season and they mm-hmm. got right back into it. I think the numbers are up. 
you notice in the last, I don't know, two weeks, three weeks, um, arenas are, are operating at full capacity. Correct. Mm. Correct. Correct. Which yeah. is, that's, it took a while, but they're there now. I think the only one that's not is the Clippers. I don't think they're at full capacity because okay. because the seats, if you notice, they push the seats back. It almost looks like a high school um, or a matter of fact, a college gymnasium will file court size seats. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, I think fans' enthusiasm because we had the bubble last year has really picked up. I mean, heck, I'm, I'm watching games late at night that I would never watch, you know, but it's, it's playoff basketball, and these guys are just banging. You know, they're, they're you can't go to sleep. Unbelievable. No, you can't go to sleep because when you wake up, you're like, what? <clears throat> right, right, what? right, right. Like right. there was like five minutes left when I went, you know, when I shut right. it off. Right, it was right. like my twenty. Right, right, right. right. If, if you're only down by ten with five minutes left, everybody has a run in the NBA, and, and it shows. It, it definitely shows. So now it's been a great playoff. Um, and, and uh, kudos and hats off to whoever wins. You know, it could be first time winners. Um, well, but it definitely general a first time generational winner. You know, you got kids in their forties that never saw someone, uh, you know, of these teams win win it all. Oh, yeah. And it, and it's kind of good. And this is the last thing I want to say. It's kind of good not to have um, Boston, L.A. Lakers, you know, Warriors, the guys that almost always win it. You know, it's kind of nice. Suspects. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of nice not to. Um, and I, I, I'm a LeBron fan. Well, I'm kind of glad he's not playing. You know, let somebody else have an opportunity. New blood. You know, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now we know who Trey Young is. Now we know who Devin Booker is. But, yeah, you know, um, you know, we crazy. always knew who PG three was, but um, I'm sorry, PG thirteen was Paul George third. But, um, you know, it's given an opportunity for someone else to really get in there and shine. Yeah. You know, what I would say something, you know, we just talked really good about NBA. Um, but I, I heard something in passing. I don't know how true. Um, I, I think it's true. But uh, about the WNBA. Like, mm-hmm. they can't give away tickets. Like, That's it's, true. It's like, they, it's, it's, yeah. you know, and it's and I heard someone talk about it and they're like, these are very, we, we talked about these female athletes, right? They're, they're very good. They, they spend a lot of time to do what they're doing. They're very, very good at what they do. But I, they, can't feel the, they can't feel the stands because the way that they play is actually the proper way. Like they play the, the way it was designed to play. They are, okay, imagine watching, watching a league where everyone was Tim Duncan. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, that's what it is. It's they, they do exactly everything right. You're not going to see a whole lot of others. I mean, there's always those over the shoulders, who, you know, full court, half court kind of things. They're, they're technical. They, they, go, they buy the book and it's, it's not smash mouth. Um, it, yeah. Um, Plus, sorry, no, more, norm, normally they're not dunking. You're dunking the ball because I, I think that's America's biggest excitement. You know, either crossover. Or uh, you know, uh, alley oop, or teardrop, as they're calling it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's the theatrics. It's it's the you know the alley oop. It's all that, but it's it's the it's the uh, the roughhousing. It's the potential for violence. It's the potential for, <laughs> for you know what I'm saying. It's it's all that stuff. Um, you won't find that in women's basketball. And my problem with women's basketball has always been how they market it. It's not men's basketball. It's women's basketball. Mm-hmm. So, you know, how do you market and make it more, more palatable and, and put more uh, butts in the seats? I'm not the guy. I, I can't answer that for you. But um, if you're, I think that's part of the problem is if you're expecting to see mm-hmm. uh, what you see in men's basketball and women's basketball, you're not. Right. It, mm-hmm. It's, 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 well, it's the same sport, but that you're just not going to see that. So, um, and it sucks because um, I, I, I go to the WNBA games, and you're right. Um, these women are absolutely – I mean, they're, they're fucking incredible. Yeah. You they know, know, but they know what they're doing. There's yeah. No question. You know, but, you know, it, it's – to me, it's, it's, it's marketing. You know, who, who's the audience for this? And, and how are you reaching them? Are you reaching them? I don't think that they are. 
and, and what I'll say is, you know, I'm old enough to remember before the WNBA, I think it was like USB. It was something else. There was another league before and it didn't last. Mm-hmm. It didn't last very long. This is what Cheryl Miller and players like that way back, mm-hmm. back then. But you know what? Do you know why the WNBA is lasting now? Because, because of the NBA. Because it's, ha- it, it's, it's a subsidiary of the NBA. Yeah. Like it, mm-hmm. it, that other league was standing on their own and they couldn't, I don't know how many seasons they did, maybe they did five, but they're like the ABA, right? <laughs> they couldn't make it work. So mm-hmm. now they're still, you know, they'll drag along for the next 50 years. Right, but mm-hmm. they're not filling the stands. So. You know, the other thing about the WNBA is that they play so late. You know, they're not playing when college females are playing. Um, you know, and I understand that they, they've got they to should. kind of, yeah, they've, they've got to play when they can get an arena. But heck, the Washington Mystics have their own arena. Uh, it's, it's in Congressional Heights uh, in Southeast D.C. Um, but the most people aren't focused on after the NBA playoffs. Yeah. No one really is focused on the WNBA, you know. Yeah. And 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 those college kids that that might go to a game or or even high school coaches that grab you know their their girls team and takes them to a game, they're all on summer break pretty much. Yeah. So, real real quick, I want to um, I want to jump back for a second. Uh, Simone Manuel. Simone Manuel is the uh, the uh, the black female swimmer uh-huh. who is uh, going to the Olympics. I just want to make sure that that we gave her her flowers. Uh, I felt it was extremely disrespectful for us to bring her bring up her up in conversation and not right. uh, tell her name. So Simone uh, Manuel is who that is, and we want to make sure uh, that just be a man gives her her flowers. All right. Chuck, is she American uh, swimming for America? Yes, think yeah, yeah. swimming for America. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I understand I, I, she's a beach. Uh, she's a yeah. beast. Well, she's a four-time Olympic medalist already. Ooh. So yeah, so she's she's going back and uh, she's going to represent us well. Okay. Okay. Excellent. You know, you know, Seth. I can bring something else up. Did we lock up here? Can you guys hear me? Hello. Hello. Nah, nah, nah. nah. Okay. Uh, or, or when we see a group of people running, we just join in. That's it. Yeah. Or turn on the car, Paul Lewis. Yeah, yeah. Or we hear gunfire. We're going to either hit hit the ground or run. But we're not going to go see where that gunfire is coming from. No, sir. Opposite direction. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's talk the NFL, the National Football League. Um, Wayne, you want to lead off? Well, you know, um, you know, I have nothing w- lovely to say about Washington, but what I will Watch say, what I will say is, you know, I've been looking to, I've been looking at it a little bit, uh, just because I'm trying, you know, trying to get geared up for it, and I see that, you know, okay, first of all, we we represent the NFC East, right? And last year we were crap. This year we don't look much better. But I, I, ha- I might, I have, I will say this, and this will be on tape. Hmm. I think Washington wins the NFC. Ooh! I, 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 not that that's a great feat, but it's we, we're looking horrible. This the giant, yeah, yeah. Look around, Chuck. I ain't gonna say it again. I, is this is it, we are? Okay, I'm just checking to see if we're taping. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, no, <laughs> we. Um, it's just the NFC East is bad. And, 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 and Washington is the most stable out of that. I think Dallas is going to, I don't know what they're going to do, but uh, they don't scare anybody. The Giants are rebuilding. The Eagles, new quarterback, new coach, come on. So it, it's going to be, I mean, even though they're going to win, it's going to be an eight and eight season. <laughs> but they still will win. That's my prediction. You know, as as uh, I actually find, uh, I, I I'm actually kind of with you on that. How? But uh, the Washington team mm-hmm. always finds a way. They always find a way to fuck it. I just, I, I just, I, I don't understand it. It is the mo- It's the craziest thing. You know, preseason you have you have hope. You know. And then the first, usually it's like the first 
three games. We may lose the first one, but then we like win like the first, the second, third, and fourth, and then oh my god, and and let me just yeah, it's it's yeah. I mean, you know, I, I try to finish one season like NBA before I get into really jumping with two feet, but uh, mm-hmm. but it, you know, it started to get intriguing. And, you know, you kind of, there's been a bunch of moves, you know, Julio Jones has moved. See, you got to fill me in because I haven't even had a chance to, I don't know what's going on in the NFL right now. Yeah, there's a lot of trades. I mean, like, you know, well, let's just talk about like uh, Wentz, you know, Carson Wentz, Carson, who, was, uh, who played for the Eagles. He's at, he's at um, the Colts. So we'll see what that does. He, he did a horrible job. Uh, yeah. I, I'm sorry, but it was a horrible job. And then, um, mm-hmm. you know, if we look at Julio Jones, he got traded to um, from Atlanta to um, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. So now you got that beast in the backfield, and, you get, and now you got him on one side. You know, it's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. You know, you right. got uh, Matt Stafford moved from Detroit, finally, and they picked him up at the Rams. So Whoa. yeah, yeah. So so and and, huh. and golf went to, to Detroit. So I mean, there's a bunch of stuff going on. A ton of linemen and defensive backs, uh, defensive mm. players, and everything. But but you know, those are some of the more keynote kind of moves. Um, What's going on with your team? The Eagles, like I yeah. said, they're rebuilding, right? They have yeah. a new, new coach, new court. You know, um, the new quarter, uh, second year quarterback. Uh, he had a good. He had a good. End of the season, uh, five six games. He, he played well, um, but but everybody knows once you get tape on once you get tape on a quarterback, that's just done, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. You, you're not going to be yeah. able to. Do, they're going to take away what you like. They think they know how to do. They're going to take away what you like. So I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll Dude, what happens. I hate to interrupt, um, but uh, as soon as you said something about nice about the Redskins, my computer crashed. See, it crashed. See? Told it's you. A, oh my God. As soon as you said something nice about the rescue, hey. and my, my screen went completely blue. It, it, couldn't, oh take, it couldn't take the truth. It couldn't take the truth. <laughs> well, we appreciate it though. Yeah. But I, I know we're towards the end here, and Steph, I don't mean to take this over, but the one last thing I wanted to talk about was box. Yeah. And, and if you had something else, please do it, and then we'll come back to box. I just didn't want to miss that. Okay. Go ahead. Boxing or MMA? No, boxing. It, okay, it, but, but that's, a, that's a good segue though, right? So, yeah. um, you know, I hear things. And uh, one of the things I heard <laughs> recently is, uh, you know, th- they've been having, and you guys have noticed it slowly, but they've been having these, um, I'll call them a money grab, of these celebrity mm-hmm. fights. Mm-hmm. And so you have Mayweather fighting one of these Logan boys. And, you know, I heard someone ask the question, and, you know, I don't, you know, we grew up at a time where we're talking about Hagler, Leonard, Hearns. You know, we're talking about big boys, right? And now, some of that stuff, we don't have that same, we don't have that same. Uh, uh, I believe from start to finish was totally staged. Mm-hmm. Um, and, in a, you know, uh, for anyone that hasn't seen it, you know, um, it, well, first of all, in my opinion, I, don't, I, don't, I really don't think there's anybody in boxing anyway. That's just me, all right? Mm-hmm. So, so what's happening? So you got Floyd, who's semi-retired, if you will, who, and like Wayne was saying, this was just a money grab. You got mm-hmm. Logan Paul, who's a... a YouTuber. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, he's a YouTuber. Well, look, let's call him what he is. He's a fighter now, all right? Mm-hmm. He was a YouTuber. That's where he made his, his, his start. He is a fight fan. Um, he really yeah. is a fight fan, so... Right. You know. he's, look, he, he got, he's, he's, he he's earned the right to be there. He's... he's, 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 he's but the bottom line is like the whole build up to it, you know, and he's stealing Floyd, his brother stealing Floyd's hat and trying to antagonize Floyd and all that. All this stuff was just, he's a YouTuber, like you said, you know, not to minimize him, but this was for show, this was for views, this was for likes, this was for uh, ad revenue, this was for, this is all this was for. And mm-hmm. so to me, it was disrespectful to boxing. Um, mm-hmm. it, you know, call it what it is. If this is just an ex- exhibition, uh fight or you wanted to um 
uh, Logan Paul. This is really Logan Paul, uh, his audition against one of the best fighters in the world, or this is Logan Paul being able to say that he fought the biggest fighter in the world. Say that shit, but don't call it a fight. Don't call it, you know, because now you've cheapened boxing for me. All right. That's With where everybody. I was going. That's where I, was I mean, going. yeah. I mean, because there's already nobody in the sport for, for me. Nobody that, right. you know, back in the day, we used to have fight parties because at each tier of the boxing, uh, 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 you know, rank, um, you had uh, qualified fighters that were in big names, big, big names. hitters, big fighters, it's people that you wanted to see in sport. Now, it, it, fighting is just so lackluster. But not only that, um, it, it, they're moving away from boxing to MMA. Mm -hmm. MMA is becoming the big thing. It's becoming, I said this years ago. I said that they, if they because society is changing. Society wants to see, um, we're, we're, we're a society, of, we want everything now. So we want to see if somebody uh, gets hurt, we want to see them bleed. And, you know, it, it's, it's a constant elevation. And I said that eventually we're going to be watching televised murders and executions and shit. So now, mm -hmm. the sweet science of boxing, right, which we've all grown up on and we've watched uh, all the boxers, you know, there's a uh, art, a science behind it, you know. Um, now you got MMA, and I'm not saying there's not an art or science behind it, but it, how it, 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 you get kicked in the head. What mm -hmm. I mean, that's not that's so brutal, you know, but I, I don't I, I, I'm sorry. I don't get MMA. I think it's too brutal. I think uh, I, I mean, that's to me, that's that's the equivalent of some some back alley uh, bare knuckles, bare knuckle. That's bullshit. what it is. Basically, yeah, because you know it's not boxing. I mean? Boxing, well, there's an art boxing behind boxing. it. There's a science behind it. It's bob and weave. It's don't get hit. It's it's out maneuver your opponent. This that, and the other. Uh Mixed martial arts is just that. It's martial arts. It's grabs. It's holds. It's strikes. It's it's you can choke people out. I don't want to fucking see anybody get choked out. Mm -hmm. I want to see them. I want to see how you get away from this guy advancing towards you. I want to. You know what I'm saying? So and, I, and I'm sorry to go on this rant, but I'm a. This is my sport. I'm a yeah. boxing fan. Yeah. So. Um, so, he, so let me ask this question then, Chuck. Sorry, yeah. but let me ask this question. So this is where I was going with it is. Some people say the reason that this that this celebrity type thing is happening is it's to um, get people interested in boxing, right? To, to, get, to get new fans. So those YouTubers who never saw a boxing match before, but they know this Paul dude, now they're getting interested in boxing. But, but, but wait, 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 here's the flip side. Mm -hmm. Are the people who are truly fight fans running away from boxing? I think it's a combination of both. I think, well, first of all, I don't think they were, the intention was to bring new fight fans in. No, uh, I think the intention was to sell as many tickets, to sell as many, you know, get as many eyes on it as possible. If they become fight fans, yay, great. But it's not like uh, boxing is, is went anywhere. You know, it's not like boxing is new. Uh, yeah, if you're trying to get new fight fans, you know, okay, cool. Uh, now, this this is a, a fucking fantastic way to do it. You got one of the, the, the best YouTubers or, or highest grossing or whatever YouTubers at the time. Uh, and he want, decides he wants to get in the ring and get knocked around. Yeah, you're bringing new people in. But are you bringing in the, the, the court jesters who've been following this dude? This is, a, this is a dude who started his career by jumping off shit and, and getting hit with shit. And he one of those... Uh, what what do you uh, uh, uh yeah, one of them jackass mm -hmm. dudes, okay? And then he starts, okay. So now you decide you want to do something different. Mm, I want to be a boxer, okay, dude. There are people that have been going to the gym since they were six. Golden gloves. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You just decided because it was you know you could make some money at it that you wanted to do it. Uh, okay, you can do that, but when that happens to me. That disrespects all the gyms out there. That disrespects all the people putting in the hard work at the gym. That dis disrespects everybody that was already ranked that you jumped over because uh, they saw a paycheck in you. They saw a chance to elevate, this, possibly elevate the sport in you. But now these dudes over here get, that are really boxers, that have, that have broken no, their noses fucking sideways because they, you know what I'm saying? They hit enough. Right. I, I listen. I, I don't knock anybody for capitalism. I don't knock anybody for coming up with an inventive way to make money or whatever. But if you do it at the expense of a genre, if you do it at the expense of uh, a bona fide sport, if you're dumbing down a, a sport or institution, if you're cheapening it, 
to me, you may need to rethink it. Um, so like this Jake Paul and, and all this other stuff, is this the new future of, of how we market boxing? And is this, and is this where we get boxers from, from YouTube and TikTok? And, and honestly, TikTok, they have these, these, these guys that do this, these backyard fights and these MMA stuff and all that. And some of these guys are pretty good. So my fear, my fear is that that's going to be the next go-to. Instead of going, these people going the right route and getting ranked and all this other stuff because of their star power or their ability to bring fresh eyes or fresh revenue, to, they're just going to screw the system and start picking these random people. So there's to me, there's a number of different issues with boxing and MMA and the merging of the two or the not or whatever, but I'm sorry. I'm a fan of boxing. I'm a fan of the sweet sport of boxing. I think boxing is going the way of the dinosaur. Uh, I think boxing is going to become a, it used to be one of our top sports, meaning, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, fight parties, all of that, uh, pay-per-view, um, Trump, uh, Don, Don King okay. productions, all that. Uh, who's, who's producing fights now? Don't know. Because yeah, I, I, didn't I hear De uh, De La Hoya is coming back? Did, you heard that, right? Wow, De La Hoya. Bro. Yeah, you you got <laughs> fuck. You got talk. You got Mike Tyson broke. talking about coming back. Come on, man. So so let me just say is that this. What we're doing? Yeah. I, so I agree with a lot of what you said, Chick. There's only one thing I there's one thing I have a different opinion on. Huh? That is when I asked if you thought that it's um, they're trying to bring people in. Think about this. Think about this. Um, that 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 Paul fight with uh, Mayweather was a pay per view yeah. event, mm -hmm. right? When's the what's the last pay per view event that there was for the for boxing? Well, I can't remember one. Yeah, it's been it was a while. probably it was probably uh, Fury, uh, Tyson Fury, and um, no, no, we um, yeah, we had some Manny, for Manny, Pac, um, Manny Pacquiao. Um, Pacquiao. Yeah. But, but, okay, but let me you. okay, but let me say this then. Okay, maybe I I got that wrong, but let me say this though. Those MMA. They damn near got a pay per view every month. Oh no! Don't get me wrong. I, I, I listen. So money. It's moving towards MMA. That's what I'm saying. It, it, listen, there's a natural progression in almost everything, right? Okay. So, but what I'm saying is, um, MMA to me, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm different. I'm old school. I, I, I appreciate boxing. Boxing in itself is brutal, right? But it's the um, you know, it's it's your it's, it's it's two yeah it's it's, it's squaring up against your, your opponent. MMA, it's the same thing, but you you're doing it you and you're using your arms and legs and chokes and things like you can kill somebody. Yes. If you kick somebody in the freaking temple, you can kill them. If you choke somebody out, you're cutting off their air. Their, you know, their art. You can kill them. That's brutal to me. Um. So what I'm saying is, yeah. That's that's where we're moving towards, and you know, with it, just like with music, you know, uh, from rockabilly to the hip, I mean, to the the rock to you, know, to you know, what I'm saying, it, it, every there's a progression, and that's what's happening. You we're, we're watching it real time. Everything in this country is changing. We're watching it real time. Gen Z is taking over from Gen X. We're watching it real time. Gen Z, they like MMA. So MMA is going to, the numbers of MMA obviously are going to come up because that's where, so now there's going to be something eventually after MMA. Yeah. So, yeah. So um, I see boxing. I don't see it being gone forever. I don't see it being phased out, but uh, you'll, they'll, I don't foresee boxing ever having the numbers that it used to have because of MMA, unless we, you have a phenom come into the ring. But then, um, remember, that phenom has to also have someone to fight. Like, you, know, you know, when you that's have correct. Leonard, you had Hagler, you got Hearns, you mm -hmm. know, Dur uh, Durant, you, you had these big names to fight. But if you just have a superstar, right. almost, almost, uh, almost like, like um, Mayweather, who's right. he really fighting? That's right. why he's doing right. these freaking circus acts. Exactly. Right. So, again, who else... Not even on a fight level. Who else is on Mayweather's level on a showman level? Right? No so, one. Uh, look, nobody. Unless nobody in boxing. Up. So you go to YouTube, you get the YouTuber with the following who's got the, you know, he's, he's a showman also. This guy, uh, Logan Paul. So now you got two showmen out there. Logan Paul likes to flaunt his wealth just as much as uh, uh, Floyd May. So you got these two opposing forces. One's white, one's black. It's, it's, it's I mean, listen. This 
this match was a dream for for their purses and for the the you know the capitalist side of it and for the organizations that put it together. Everybody made a killing on this. Mm-hmm. But Absolutely. the only real killing that happened was to the sport of boxing. Agreed. I agree. Hey fellas, we're gonna have to wrap it up. I, I want to bring up one more thing. Uh, gaming. Gaming is becoming larger and larger, and you and both of you have sons that are big into gaming. Uh, and and I just noticed I was flipping through uh, files. There's a gaming channel now for sports, and I said, "Oh my God!" So that's the next big thing out there. Uh, no, it is. It's kind of safe. It's safer than boxing and basketball and and any other sport, except to set the pocket because it's expensive to play, as well as the finger. Because Make it carpal you're tunnel. Yeah, carpal tunnel. <laughs> you know, they, they can't tight work a damn, but they sure can move the, the thumbs and the fingers. Yep. But anyway, so uh, look, we're going to wrap it up. We really appreciate everyone for joining us today. Um, I think it was a lot of fun, you know, oh, talking yeah. sports. Um, look forward to uh, getting together with you guys tomorrow. Um, and we'll probably produce a video. Um, I've asked my wife to make a cupcake so we don't get another video like that again. Uh, <laughs> so we'll make sure we get cupcakes. But anyway, really like to thank you all for uh, joining us and uh, look for us on all your social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, um, Spreaker. You can also find all of our um, podcasts on www.jbampod.com as well as if you're on YouTube and you see our channel, like and subscribe to it. You know, we would appreciate it. So yeah, with please, that please, being please. said, you guys got anything else before we clock out? Hey, no. Th- uh, good job, Steph. I just yeah, had fun doing this. And, you know, thank you for all the people who, stay, who are sticking with us. That's it. Okay, so Chuck, take us home. In the words of my brother Mike, I'm the pappy. Peace. <laughs>